As I have mentioned yesterday, regenerate bodhicitta is very important as we are Mahayana practitioner. We benefit all sentient beings by applying the Buddha Dhamma, the listening, contemplation, and meditation. <coughs> With these three the practices, we are able to the benefit all sentient beings. The benefit means we benefit self first, then we benefit all sentient beings, bring them to the Buddhahood. But in order to bring them to Buddhahood, one must get ready to help all sentient beings. So, how to get ready to help sentient beings and apply it with the Dhamma? By listening, by contemplation, and by meditation. Now, this is essence <coughs> teaching from the Atisha. It's called the essential instruction of the Mahayana. The trans transmitted from the Atisha, which is the root verses, root verses of the um, what do you call Bodhisattva, the Nobutama, the the Jew of the Rosary. Mm -hmm. They're just not. It's not so important because they are trying to entertain you <laughs> because. We need some time entertainment, right? <laughs> because when you uh, when you read the um, the textbook, sometimes the lectures when you listen so called or oh, enlightenment in one week, then you run to that. <laughs> you are so excited. But if somebody say, "Oh, general teaching," then you say, "Ah, maybe very boring." <laughs> so. Atisha knows your witness, so therefore he tried to entertain you to bring you to in this uh, teaching. So it's called the jewelry <coughs> rosary, which is very expensive. Jagarkedo bodhisattva mani awali dekedo shangshu senba nubhutama tuji senbola cha salo. Subject to means we supplicate <coughs> to the um, the Lord of Compassion, the Great Compassion. And then next one is Lama Nama Chatsalo. Then supplicate to the great the masters or the great gurus. The next one is Tebe Hala Chatsalo. So supplicate to the um, the deities, the wisdom deities. The wisdom deities, there is a tepe, that means the date, the date wisdom deities, that each and every individual has their own the deities, wisdom deities. Give me an example like if I do practice Waitara, then Waitara is the object to supplicate. If somebody does practice of Avalokiteshora, and Avalokiteshora is the, the object of the supplication. But in the space of the Dhammadhatu, all deities, all gurus, and all Dhamma protectors are inseparable. So when you do practice like Yidam practice, you do all kinds of Yidam practice, green Tara, white Tara, and uh, four arm Jerese, thousand arm Jerese, there are so many practices, so you get confused. Sometimes you may not be able to do all these, although you want it. You want to do all practices. You see this one, oh, so nice, I want to do this one. And then you see next one, oh, rock food, I want to do that one. So you really want to do all kinds of practices, you down Dhamma protectors, but cannot finish, and we cannot do all of them. So all in one is important. 
We should have this knowledge and we should have the wisdom to realize our Lokiteshwara is all in one. Vaitara is the all in one. No need to do individually, one by one. Very difficult. Although you do that, there's not much really success. Tired, time wise, and you're exhausted. You are forcing yourself to do practice, to recite mantra. You keep all kinds of mantra, green, blue, red, <laughs> the white for the white tara, green for green tara, the black for mahakala, dark blue for the uh, for six arms mahakala. So this is quite troublesome in the practice. So practical way of practicing all in one is the best. Therefore, then the Lama Namna Chatao. Lama means the great master, the guru. And uh, the Lama here refers to the masters who has gained fully experience of the compassion and the loving kindness and the wisdom. <coughs> and themselves did practice very well and achieved that practice. And uh, achievement of that practice is now sharing with all sentient beings and they're giving us the direction and they're giving us the path and they're giving us the, the instruction clearly which one is right, which one is wrong, which one is need to be adopted and which one is need to be abandoned, clearly given the path and the direction. So that sort of for the individuals or, or the beings call the Lama, which is the Guru or Great Master. Tukji Chambula Chatsalo, that means the great compassion. Tukji means compassion. Chempo means great. The great compassion is the source of the enlightenment. When we talk about the great, com great compassion, the great compassion is the essence practiced in the Mojo, in the Kadamba tradition. Like seven point of mind training, is the essence of the practice in seven point of mind training is exchanging, yeah? giving and the taking. Giving and the taking is the essence of practice of the Mojo. So without compassion, great compassion, one cannot practice the Mahayana view, Mahayana meditation, and the Mahayana conduct. All this view, conduct, meditation, very much based on this great compassion. Not only compassion, but very great, very great compassion. Okay, now the root verses. Tetsum tamsi pangsa sing. Okay, now, Tetsum Tamche Pangsa Sing. Tetsum means like feeling of uncertainty or doubt. And uh, there's a lot of resistance in our practice. You, you want to do practice. But same time, there are a lot of doubts. So this disturbs you to get into the practice. So in the Kadampa tradition, or the, those great masters in the past, they are very determined, very decisive, getting into the practice. Because they know that samsara has no more happiness. And I myself, as a practitioner, I'm not looking for the miseries the pain, the suffering, not at all. I want to get rid of these miseries and the pain and the suffering. So, there's only one option, which is get into or enter into the Dhamma practice. So, you have to have a full of wisdom, realizing which one is right, which one is wrong. What is a samsara? What is a nirvana? And you knowing those different notions, and you become very determined and very decisive. 
during practice, you have to be very decisive and very determined. If you feel always like weak, mentally very weak, want to do that, but you are at the same time very scared. And you want to go to retreat, but at the same time you're scared. One week, oh, too long. <laughs> One month, oh, too long. One year, forget about that. <laughs> so that sort of, uh, you have a, what you call the weakness, mentally, not, never, not really prepared well. Not really prepared well. Even one hour meditation, you are not so well prepared. But here it says, abandon that kind of undecisive uh, the mental attitude. Be determined, be very decisive, get into the practice. Feeling of uncertainty or the doubt disturbs us delaying our practice, always a delay. Therefore, our life is very uncertain and we would not know that when death will come. Huh? So when death comes, if you, that moment, if you try to, if you prepare to dhamma, do Dhamma practice, it's not the right time, it's the wrong time. So right time is now, when you are healthy, that you are able to do the Dhamma practice physically, mentally, it's available, everything is available with you, and uh, so take the chance and do practice. Undecisive notion is the biggest is the obstacle for the Dhamma practitioner. So, if you delay Dhamma practice, then you will never be achieved the, the great happiness in this life. And you are still hoping maybe next life, but that also very uncertain. So make it useful or meaningful of this life with the determination, full of determination, one should get into the Dhamma practice. So that's why here Atisha says, Tesum Tanki And uh, Actually, the doubt is uh, once the disturbed by your doubt or the feeling of uncertainty, then the next practice also, if you want to do that practice, but then there is another doubt and the feeling of uncertainty will arise. And then that is the biggest disturbance for you because you are unable to enter that practice. And now next, some practices that may you like it or like to do, but another, the doubt or feeling of uncertainty arise, and that disturbs you. So it affects all the time, so that with this will never let you get out of this feeling of uncertainty. So it's what we call the negative, the tendency, it's always there. So therefore, you should cut immediately when it comes, like doubt or feeling of uncertainty. And you be very determined, say that, because of the good, because of the, my precious human life, and because of the, my wisdom, I can do it. I can do practice, I can do retreat, I can do the, all the practices, the generating compassion, love and kindness, and the wisdom, I can follow the great masters and I can follow their instructions. I will do now. So that kind of determination that helps you to overcome these unnecessary, the, the feeling of uncertainty. Drupla nentin jesucha, the second verse. Drupla means the practice. Drup means practice. And the nenten means with the diligence. Che sucha. Che means like joyfully. Practice joyfully, willingly. From the beginning list of the samsara. And we wander in this cyclic existence. And gone through 
all kinds of pain and suffering, which we don't want. And all this pain and suffering is unwanted circumstances and unfavorable circumstances. Definitely we don't want them at all, but no choice now, because lack of diligence, lack of wisdom, and a lack of application. We read, we listen, but we rarely apply this, or we rarely actualize to what we have heard and what we have seen or what we have read the book. But problem is the application. When you are, as I said yesterday, our biggest problem is when you do session inside the room or inside the cave or inside the retreat center, and you feel that, oh, I'm doing quite okay. Because, of course, you are doing quite okay. There is no disturbance around you. And uh, there is no taste. And we need to taste, is it? When you eat a good food, so how could you prove this is good food? You eat and then you say, yes, it's good food, it's delicious. When you look at the food, you can't say, oh, this is a delicious food. <laughs> I don't think so. I would not believe that, unless you really taste. So therefore, your taste means everyday life. We have all kinds of the object, good, bad, the pleasant, unpleasant, and then you should examine our emotion. How does it arise? How does it work with your emotion? How does it work with these objects? Then you will know, did I really apply Dhamma accordingly or not? All sorts of objects around you and are all object of your practice and your, your um, the examination and your training of mind. So therefore, Kadamba, it's very direct teaching, so that test yourself, see how, does it really work or not? Not simply uh, count the mala, sit in the sun, have a cup of tea, uh, and recite some uh, very beautiful mantras. And uh, so that is not really enough in the Kadamba tradition. This is a very strict and a very direct teaching, which is striking your and your emotion. And I make sure practice really is working with my emotion. And I make sure that you gain experience from the practice. I don't want to waste my time. I want to really make sure that practice is really going very well with me. So that sort of determination you have to have in the practice. Therefore, Sleep is no good. <laughs> of course, it's good for health, but too much sleep, no good. Therefore, muk, slow moving, dullness. And the lelo means the laziness. These three disturb our practice. So, Real practitioners, they sleep short period of time. But many people say you have to have sleep at eight hours. Otherwise, your health gets something wrong. But I don't believe so, because those great masters who does not sleep at all, but they are very healthy. <laughs> so far, so far they are healthy. So it does not mean that you don't sleep. But of course, you can sleep but sleep short and do more practice. Because we have been enough sleep and from the beginning of the time till now, you really, we really enjoy with the sleep. Sleep in the morning, there's another so-called nap after the lunch. So called, it's really important, nap. And the evening also said rest to sleep, a little bit on chair, about five to 10 minutes. So we are really enough enjoyed with the sleep. So, but Kadamba not so keen about these ideas because this will delay and the delay and the delay of practice. Then, we're wasting our precious human life, which is very rare to be obtained in the fitness in the future. 
So that rare, precious human life is already obtained and already achieved. Now our the responsibility is to make use for this precious human life uh, through abandon, abandoning these so-called like sleeping and the slow moving or dullness or the laziness. So we have to be fresh. We have to be fresh in the morning, fresh in the afternoon, fresh in the evening. If you think of the pain and the suffering of the samsara, I'm quite sure we all be fresh always. <laughs> yes. But why we are not so fresh? Because we didn't experience much about the pain and the suffering, and we don't really care so much about that. So therefore, we are still enjoying with the sleep and the laziness. As I said yesterday, the Kadamba Master says that I have no time to be smiled. Yeah? When I see the pain and the suffering of all sentient beings, there is no point or there is no sense to be smiled at all. Likewise, the same case here, when you experience this unnecessary suffering and the pain of this samsara, this is our daily life. There's nothing special lesson that needs to be learned. This is our basic lesson, everyday life, going through all kinds of suffering and the pains. Right? So no need to be, uh, no need to be uh, the study, no need to be the pick up this lesson, but this is our life, everyday life. So with that experience, like to me, like Kadamba Master, they don't have a sense to be the relaxed. Because if this is the case, you are wasting your life and wasting your time. Therefore, be diligent, always. Like uh, the great mas master Otowa, very great master in Kadamba. And uh, his main practice is called no time practice. <laughs> yes, long man, Tibetan called long man, means no time. So, no, lo no time helps you to progress all the Dhamma practices. Why we do not? We do practice, of course, we do practice, but not much progress, not much, not much achievement that we, uh, we make. Why? Because there is still some obstacles of laziness. Sometimes too much rest, and we do rest, and we entertain each other, say, okay, take rest, take rest. And when I'm sick also, some Dharma friends say, take rest, take more rest. <laughs> And more rest, and more rest, more rest, and it up die. That's it. <laughs> no, yeah. So by resting, you didn't achieve anything else. Yeah. So it's quite a stupid the way you say that. Keep your rest, rest, and rest. But then the potawa says, "I have no time to rest. I did rest from the beginning this of the time. So I'm still in the samsara. This is the result of the rest." <laughs> So now I have seen that rest is the biggest uh, obstacle to the practitioners, to the practice. Therefore, now I give up the mind of the resting. Now I pick up the mind of no time. So no time push me forward into the practice. And the no time, the mind of the no time push me into the Dhamma practice. And the, practice of the no time that helps me to progress my Dhamma practice. So therefore, my main practice is no time. So his name is Podova. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to me, I feel sometimes it is quite unfair because those great masters really done so hard work for us, not for them. And they have been achieved their practice but they have given such a wonderful teachings behind for us. But we take very lightly. Just read, oh, he says this, he said that. <laughs> and yeah, that's it. I really don't take seriously practice. And um, so that's quite unfair. Yet, at the same time, what do we do? We do supplications, say, please grant your blessing, help me, protect me. But how? They can't do much. 
what they can do is with the teachings. The these beautiful words, and the these essential teachings. That's the only they can help us. The beyond that, they can't do anything, I'm very sure. They can't do. And what they have given us, and we don't care so much. But at the same time, at the side, you make noise. Say that, do you see me? Do you think of me? I always call you. <laughs> I'm sure they don't hear you. I'm quite sure they don't hear you. They hear you only under the condition. If you apply these teachings, they can hear you. Yes. So that's very true. Therefore, I'm saying unfair means somebody did so much for us, but we don't do. And somebody say, do this, don't do that, but we do opposite. Yes, I did say this to two days back. They say do, we don't do. They say don't do, we purposely do that. So that's how I'm saying it's quite unfair. So therefore, if you are really devoted, genuine practitioner, then you must know that what is the right and the wrong should have the wisdom to distinguish these two and to choose the right one and not the wrong one. And the Miller Reba says in his Doha, in the future, Miller Reba says, in the future, if those practitioners, if they really do apply Dhamma correctly or actualize the teachings, because of Milarepa himself going through these difficulties and hardship of work with his practice, he said, this will affect you. Because he had met very strong aspiration, which he has given a wonderful wishes that may my hard work my diligence be able to benefit those beings the, who are diligent in the future with the Dharma practice. So there is a connection. This shows us the blessing is a very loyal connection that what they did and we follow as a we are follower and we have to do the same thing. Now, if you imitate that way, there is no doubt to receive the blessing. So the blessing is a very essential power that is a something from heart to heart and from mind to mind, not physical to physical at all. So therefore, Milarepa has done all his hard work in order to the benefit sentient beings. Therefore, his commitment is the practice that he has done is for beneficial, for benefiting all sentient beings. So he had a met connection already to us, if we do apply the Dharma accordingly, if we listen his teachings accordingly and seriously, if we do that, then he says his blessing is always there and that he will support us and that he will protect us and that his blessing is unceasingly flowing on us. Right? So therefore, to be diligent is not only forcing yourself, but willingly, joyfully, with the full of understanding and we do practice, then all the Dhamma protectors, deities, the gurus will protect you, give you blessing. Now next verses is Tendam Shijin Payupe Wangbu Gwanam Kundu Sung. The two verses. Now in order to be diligent, yeah, it's not easy to be diligent, because in the our the Shantidevas, the Bodhisattva Jaya Avatara, when he explains the characteristic of the diligence, is not forcing yourself or pulling yourself into the practice, it's rather joyfully you are engaging in the Dhamma practice, study, contemplation, meditation, whatsoever, you engage with the joy, with the full of joy. If you have that sense of like the joyfully study, joyfully contemplating, joyfully meditating, so that is the characteristic of the diligence. Right? So therefore, in order to be a good diligent or diligent person, what I'm supposed to do in order to become a good or good diligent person, then the next instruction is say, be a mindful. 
If you are not mindful, then there are a lot of obstacles. Mental distraction, that's the biggest problem for the practitioners. Distraction, the mental distraction. Therefore, in order to avoid this mental distraction, one should be very mindful. So, these two verses explains what is mindfulness. To be mindful, <coughs> then <coughs> means it's a Tibetan called park you. It's a something like spying yourself, not spying others. Now we spying others. What does he? What is he talking? What is he doing? Is he really doing right, or is he wrong? So, so busy spying after others, but very rare spying myself. So. Teachings in the Katampa, those Lojong mind training, <coughs> to become mindful <coughs> practitioner, then should I spy myself, spying after me, my physical attitude, my verbal attitude, my mental attitude. I need to spy, I need to spy, and I need to examine. You know, so by examination, examination, by spying my attitude, then slowly you can become a very mindful person. According to the Bodhisattva Vajrayana Avatara, the, the fourth chapter and the fifth chapter mainly explanation of the mindfulness. And uh, given two aspects, one is the temper. Tibetan name is Tempa, Tibetan called Tempa. Not Tibetan called, but Tibetan words is the Tempa. Another one is Shishin. What difference is between? To me, Shishin is like really mindfulness. Shishin. Shishin means like really being mindful. So, with this mindfulness that helps you or to protect your mind from the destruction. To protect you, always protect your mind. But in case, because of this, the negative, the habitual tendency, sometimes it's easy to be distracted your mind. And what happens when your mind is distracted? Then tenpa means remember the suffering, the pain, the misery of these six realms caused by destruction. No? Because of the because of the destruction, the mental destruction, so that the result is the pain and the suffering. So you remember all oh, pain and the suffering is all caused by the mental destruction. So with this practice, recollect your mind back to normal. It helps you. So there are two aspects. Be careful or alertness, so that is the mindfulness, that is the shishin. But sometimes what happens if your mind becomes very distracted, then the think of the pain and the suffering. So this helps you to bring back or recollect your mind back to normal. So that is the temba. <laughs> to protect your faculties. Huh? So when you see something, so you should apply mindfulness. When you hear something, you should apply mindfulness. If you do not apply mindfulness because of seeing something and the lack of a training of your mind and the lack of a practice, then your mind is carried away by these powerful objects. So this is our problem. If you are advanced practitioner, okay, then you have a power to bring all these objects into your practice and no longer these negative thoughts or objects uh, can uh, disturb you at, not at all and that they cannot disturb you because you are the advanced practitioner. But for the beginner, the starting point is very important. The starting point is the alertness and the mindfulness and the carefulness and the cautiousness. These are very important in our practice. Otherwise, our mind is very fragile. Huh? 
very easy to be, um, be, be carried away by these powerful objects. Therefore, the Atisha says here, to protect the faculties. Mm -hmm. So next two verses is explaining uh, how to examine our <coughs> own uh, the mental attitude. So day and the night, he says, means in the day and the night, and the three times a day and the three times a night, and the repeatedly and the repeatedly need to be examine your mental attitude. Even you engage Dharma practice, like talking about cultivating bodhicitta, compassion, loving kindness, but at the same time, it's very important to examine your motivation. Does not mean you are applying bodhicitta, compassion, loving kindness is good. It's not always good. That just also depends your motivation. As long as your the 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 dharma activities or dharma practice is uh, mainly or or solely only for the benefiting of all sentient beings and nothing to do with your own personal the benefit, then that is the correct dharma practice. But certain dharma practices we do, but at the same time there are a lot of uh, the negative attention, intention and a negative motivation. So seemingly you are engaged in dharma practice, but in the reality that is something to do with your own personal benefit. So which is a totally contradict to the practice of Mahayana or the Buddha Dhamma. So therefore, examining your mental attitude or motivation from time to time is very important, which helps you to protect, which helps you, which helps to protect your mind, the engaging the negativities. So clear distinction the between, you know, the, the right and the wrong means everything based on your motivation. So yesterday I have mentioned the Kunham is very important, not the Dharma practice itself. Dharma practice is of course seemingly it looks like the Dharma, but if it is start the, from the wrong point, then it's not Dharma practice. Although it's seemingly Dharma practice, but it's not Dharma practice. So therefore, the motivation and the attitude is very important. So this is a very <coughs> practical and a very essential instruction because uh, many times, seemingly, we are really doing Dhamma practice so much and we spend time hours and hours and hours doing Dhamma practice, doing meditation, doing all kinds of Dhamma practice, but the failed to recognize what was the motivation. So that is it. That's why you can see not much progress in our Dhamma practice <coughs> and not much benefit that you can again experience from the Dhamma practice. It is all because of wrong foundation and the wrong uh, point where your practice begins. So therefore, examining our mental attitude is very important. In the Theravada tradition, also they emphasize mainly for examining attitude. And the Mahayana more serious, and the Vajrayana much, much more serious. So upgrading the examination. There's not much excuses in the practice say that we are Vajrayana, do whatever we like, and we do that. It's not something like that. The principle is very important <coughs> in the Dharma practice. So principle here is recognition, my own fault and mistake. The recognition what is right, the recognition what is wrong, that I need to be judged and I need to be uh, make a, the distinction between. So that is what we call is carefulness. If you are so careful and cautious with your practice, then you can subdue the power of engaging negativities. And at the same time, you can make a development and achievement these the novel qualities. And day by day, you can experience much differences in your practice because of the carefulness. So therefore, the Katamba, Master Atisha says here, 
repeatedly, yang tang yang, that repeatedly and repeatedly need to be examined our motivation and the mental attitude. So therefore, we must not be too particular with the quantities and the numbers of we are, what we are doing, and we don't consider this as a diligent person. So diligent practitioner or diligent person who consider quality of the doing practice. And I make sure that I'm not making mistakes in our practice. Huh? So that is what we call the diligent practitioner. <coughs>